Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. I wanted today to talk to you about Goldman Sachs. Um, Goldman Sachs, in my opinion, if there were two words that, that uh, were um, the most important two words having to do with finance and in turn the cryptocurrency um, market, those are the two most important words that there are in my opinion. And the reason is that Goldman Sachs is it, Goldman Sachs rules the world. So you need to go ahead and you need to go ahead and understand that Goldman Sachs runs the world. They own the world. They rule the world. And I will show you. I'll back that up with with what I'll show you here shortly. But first, I wanted to start by telling you a story that actually happened to me about a month ago. I um, I live in a in a small town in Georgia. And I, but I bank with one of the top two uh, largest banks in the world. And, um, but there is in my town, a local bank who has the majority of the market share in, in my town. Well, I was the, the, the branch of the large bank that I bank with only has one branch in, in this town. I was asking the branch manager the other day, I said, why do you only have one branch? I said, why you guys could own this entire market. And his reply to me was that every time that, that they go, his, his uh, bank goes to try to get approved for another branch. The, uh, the city council in our town is controlled by the local bank that owns this town. And I was sitting there thinking, now how crazy is that, that some small uh, regional local bank could keep everybody out of this town and even keep a huge, large mega bank out of this town that way. But it's true. That's, that's how they control the market. And so the reason I bring that up to you is that we need to we need to face the facts about about who is running the show when you when you go and you uh, are watching a clip of of um, these SEC chair people or any kind of people that are in any form or fashion related to the politics of our country or the politics of the world they have agendas and they have people that they serve and people that they answer to. And what I'm here to tell you is that Goldman Sachs is the, if there's one, one company in finance that these guys are all beholden to in politics and otherwise it's Goldman Sachs. And I want to go over that with you uh, for a minute. Um, this is just an, one article that I found and you could find multiple and it was about, it says, why do former Goldman Sachs bankers keep landing top slots at the Federal Reserve? Well, for years and years and years, Goldman Sachs, this is part of the, this is how they make all the money. This is how they keep all the money is that they control the power the same way that in my local town, this one particular bank is able to control this town. They do it by controlling the politicians. And it's no different. In fact, it's probably magnified at the uh, federal level and the world level even more than it is in local towns. But this is the way the world works, and you need to go ahead and accept it because this is this is how things work. And it's okay because you and I are invested in our XRP, and it's the smart it's the smart play. And these people that control the world are smart people, and I'll go through that too. Um, so anyway. Goldman Sachs, yeah, they, they control Federal Reserve, you name it. Federal Reserve, SEC, they've got their hands in it. And I'm going to show you. This is a list of former employees of Goldman Sachs. And I'm just going to skim this and kind of tell you, just so that you understand, keep in mind, every day you're watching TV, you're watching CNBC, you're watching um, interviews with people that are at large companies 
and uh, you're watching interviews of, of people that are in, in our government who are supposed to be in uh, roles of power, whether it's at the SEC or the Treasury or the Federal Reserve, um, all of these people. So I want you to be thinking about that. And I also want, while I'm reading this list, I also want you to be thinking about who some of the companies and the banks and the central banks that Ripple is partnered with uh, that you hear as I go along. First one, Guy Adami, CNBC's Fast Money. He, he worked at Goldman Sachs. Um, I'm going to just mentor uh, this Eric Asbrink, Minister of Finance of Sweden. <laughs> um, Deputy Prime Minister of Egypt. I won't even try to begin to say his name. Um, but let's keep going. Stephen Bannon. Anybody know that name? That he, he, he was in the Trump administration, former executive at Breitbart. Um, White House Chief of Staff, Joshua Bolton, Portuguese, Port, Portuguese economist and banker, Antonio Borges. Um, I'm going to keep going down the list. CNN host, Aaron Burnett. I, I hope you're starting to get uh, the feel that Goldman Sachs people and people that are affiliated with Goldman Sachs they don't just rule the finance world, but it's the media world, too. These guys are everywhere. Mark Carney, governor of the Bank of England. Ooh, there's a name. Um, I believe Ripple is working with the Bank of England. And former governor of the Bank of Canada. Let's keep going. Um, founder of the street.com, Jim Cramer. Does anybody know that name? I've talked about him before in all of his conflicts of interest. Um, I'm going to keep scanning this, and, and when something jump, Federal Reserve Bank of New York, William C. Dudley. So you, be thinking, when, when you see a name like this, uh, do these guys, do they have any obligation? Can Goldman Sachs pick up the phone and call these guys and ask for a favor? You better believe it. United States Secretary of the Treasury from 1965 to 69, Henry Fowler. Futures Trading Commission, Chairman of the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission, 2009 to present, per, to present, Gary Gensler. Keep going. Um, as we go down this list, uh, Under Secretary of the State of Economic, Business, and Agricultural Affairs, 2007 to now, Jeffrey Rubin. There are a couple that I wanted to make sure I pointed out. I think they were down here. Lawrence Summers, Secretary of the Treasury of the United States, 1999 to 2001. Gene Sperling, Director of National Economic Council, 2011 to 2014. Former Chairman and President of Wachovia, Robert Steele. Uh, but if you go, if you go through, uh, go up and down this list, what you will find is the people, um, and I missed this one, Chief of Staff to the Secretary of the Treasury of the United States, 2009 to present, Mark Patterson. Henry Paulson, he was during the financial crisis, former United States Secretary of the Treasury, 2006 to 2009. Okay, these guys, this is how this game works. And it's important that you understand this, but, and, and I'm going to tie this into what we're going, on, going through right now. Let's look at Jay Clayton. Jay Clayton as SEC chair akin to a fox guarding the hen house. Let's look down here. Former uh, let's see. Goldman Sachs go-to lawyer, Walter J. Clayton, former chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission. F oh, for the chairman of, in other words, they just put him in. Um, but he's the go-to, he was the go-to lawyer for Goldman Sachs. All right. Now, let's get to what we're dealing with here currently. And that is things such as exchange-traded funds trying to get approval by the SEC. Okay. Now, sorry if you are, uh, if you're wanting to believe that your SEC or your Federal Reserve and all of these different parts of your government are somehow just making decisions based on what the best decision for the time is. That's not how this game works. These guys are making decisions based on who's in the club and who's not in the club. And these guys are on the outside of the club as compared to the Goldman Sachs and the guys. What what you need to understand is this is the second time that these, these Winklevoss brothers have been rejected. 
I'm not saying that one day they won't be approved. They will be. But it won't be until the, appro the stamp of approval or the phone call is made from the Goldman Sachs level people because they will make sure that they have got their ETFs in place or have their money in place before any of this ever happens. And so, in my opinion, uh, e even if even if Goldman Sachs and some of these larger companies, maybe J.P. Morgan would be considered in that club too. Um, me, me, even even if behind the scenes they're they're creating their own vehicle investment vehicles for cryptos uh, behind the scenes or or through other companies, they will be in on this one way or another. They'll be in on this, and I'm going to show you another way they're going to be in on it, but. Um, I wanted to go over this part right here. This was from uh, one of my favorite Twitter guys at Bank XRP, SEC Securities Exchange Com Commission J Chair Jay Clayton testified at a House Financial Services June 21, uh, 21st, 2018. And this was uh, a clip where uh, this uh, representative Warren Davidson actually asked the SEC chairman about Ripple specifically and how there were lawsuits pending and why are you, can't you guys go ahead and weigh in? Well, the answer to that is it's not a coincidence that, that uh, the SEC chair people have not come out and said one way or another. There are monetary reasons, believe you me, behind the scenes that they are not. If they were going to declare it a security, they would have already done it. But there are monetary reasons, and it has to do with the powers that be that are holding this back. And if you just think about it for a minute, think about the buildup. Think about the money that is to be made in XRP uh, as a result of leaving this hanging out there for a while. It, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if the people at Goldman that make these calls are, are setting up their ETFs, setting up all, all of their buys behind the scenes and getting everything right and intentionally doing this as a marketing ploy to maximize the return. Anything's possible with these guys. They, there is nothing new under the sun and they have been running the world for, for hundreds of years, the same type of people uh, behind Goldman Sachs. And this isn't their first rodeo, as we say in the South. I wanted to show you this. To, to kind of m make that point as well. If you remember a, a, a little while back, this is from uh, May 15th of this year, a little while back, Goldman Sachs backed Circle. Okay, Circle is, is the uh, crypto uh, company that is backed by Goldman Sachs. They announced that they were going to introduce a crypto version of the U.S. dollar. Well, let me ask you this question. If it, going back to the ETF, ask yourself this. If Goldman Sachs is backing a, a crypto version of the U.S. dollar, do you think that Goldman Sachs might also want that crypto to be included in, in ETFs that are created? Could, could it be that this particular crypto, when it, when it comes out, they, they want it to be included in, in some of the, the first ETF ever created? Maybe they want that to be done. But you can be assured that they want it to be done. Now, I want to tell you another little story about um, back in December. Let's rewind to December when the market was going crazy in XRP. XRP had shot up to like $3.50. Uh, I think it peaked around early January. Well, I was talking to my brother who lives in Little Rock, Arkansas. And my brother told me that he was talking. This was right in the middle of all of the hype. He was talking to a friend of his who was a financial advisor in Little Rock, Arkansas. And he told me that his friend was literally shocked when he found out that my brother even knew what Ripple XRP was. The guy was shocked. And the guy proceeded to tell my brother that all of the financial advisors uh, at his firm were beating down the doors trying to get into XRP. They had all... Out of all the cryptocurrencies, they had looked at all of them, and these financial advisors immediately came to the obvious conclusion in the entire cryptocurrency space that anybody with an ounce of common sense eventually comes back to, and that is that XRP is far and away, by a long shot, the most important world-changing digital asset that there is and will be. 
And so all of these guys were trying to get in and they couldn't get in because if you remember, there were all kinds of log jams to getting into um, the digital assets at the time. Well, guess what? This pullback has allowed a lot of financial advisors and major wealthy people and Goldman Sachs type people. Guess what? The pullback has allowed these people to do and is allowing these people to do. It's allowing them to get in. It's almost by design. They're able to get in now because December, I've said it before, December scared them. December was the moment that they realized this crypto thing is not just for nerds behind their computers. This is for real and it's time for us to take it serious. That was what December represented. And I've asked many people that ask, uh, that I know, I've, I've been asked many times by these people, friends of mine, who know that I've been into this for a long time. Why did you not sell any of yours in December? And I tell them all the same thing, because I know what I own and I know the stage of the game that we're in. And like I told you yesterday, I think um, we're in the first inning of a nine inning baseball game. I don't even know if we're out of the first half of the inning. Um, but I tell you that story that I just told you about financial advisors to tell you, show you the next thing. I've looked around, I've always been looking around trying to find, because I know, I knew that Goldman Sachs had to be in XRP, but I've never really seen it mentioned anywhere. And so I did some searching and this is the only place, and this is actually a negative ripple article that I found. It's one of these standard FUD guys. I don't use the, the uh, FUD word and all the, the crypto language much, but this is about, I mean, this, this, I guess, this title is about as FUD as FUD gets. <laughs> so, but this is actually a negative. They were trying to be ne unsuccessfully, as usual, trying to be negative about Ripple. But if you look down here in the article, look at this. I've never seen this in all the time I've been researching this. As we saw in the crypto bull market of 2017, however, many banks such as Citibank, which I've never heard, and Goldman Sachs, have been doubling down on cryptocurrency by investing in bank-backed coin in, in a bank-backed coin known as Ripple XRP. This right here is all you need to know, plus all the other stuff I've said today. Um, but I'm not finished yet. Okay, so Goldman and the boys—they know what's going on. But here's the bigger picture, because the bigger picture is is that our country, the United States, has basically run the monetary world for the last, you know, 50 years at least. And there's a reason that there's a reason that we've run the monetary world and the reason is very simple. We are the US the US dollar is the reserve currency of the world and that as this article states comes with all sorts of benefits, but the overall, uh, they kind of tell you right here, um, the United States currently enjoys great privileges in the world due to its control of the global reserve currency. These privileges include an overpriced currency relative to its fundamentals and the ability to borrow large sums of money cheaply. In other words, what they're saying here is that the United States, through money printing and debt, has destroyed the world reserve currency over time. And I've told you this before. And if you don't understand anything else, you need to understand and print this in your mind. That's what digital assets, that's what cryptocurrencies really represent is the threat to the United States of losing their reserve currency status. That's what it really, if you really want to, See the that's the biggest fear. That's that's the greatest fear of the people who run the United States. And the, and these are the Goldman Sachs guys. They all stand to lose a lot if this was ever not the case. Well, I was I pulled this article up to show you guys that that all these other countries do not want um, the U.S. dollar to be the reserve currency anymore. And the way that they could get around this, and it says, and and here this is where. <laughs> I'm fixing to hit you with something that is profound re regarding Ripple. I did not intend, I had no idea that this was going to be in this article, but I'm about to read you something that you really need to let sink in because 
This is huge. The idea being that the U.S. wants to remain the, the world currency of the, the reserve currency of the world. So let's go down here and see what this article said. And I had no idea it was going to say that. It says, due to fears that the U.S. would attempt to use the dollar as a political weapon, Russia has developed an alternative to SWIFT. Look at that right there. Now, who else? Do you know who, who is the best, who has created the best alternative to SWIFT? And so if you're seeing the, uh, if you're seeing the Russia and the Chinas of the world that are trying to, to get rid of the U.S. dollar as the world currency and they see developing an alternative to SWIFT as a way to get around the U.S., what would be the United States' best option for defeating Russia and these other countries in this. And so if you think Goldman Sachs is not aware of the dynamics here and what's going on, uh, you better think again. Okay. So what I want my, the, my point in bringing that the, this up to you is that digital assets and cryptocurrencies, uh, represent a huge threat to the power of the United States and the power of the United States is Goldman Sachs. And so, my last two things that I want to show you, um, to reiterate my point, this is an article, China Determined to Dominate the Blockchain Industry. So, all of you that are all freaked out by all of the things you're seeing in the news and, and oh, or could the, could the U.S. ban cryptocurrencies or are they going to declare Ripple a security and all this? All that does not matter. The point is that Goldman Sachs and the United States are going to do everything in their power to defeat China. This is bigger than military. This is money. They're going to do everything in their power, and they're doing it behind the scenes. They're going to do everything to defeat China. And let me tell you what else, even though they're not our enemies, it's not just China that they're not going to let uh, overtake the United States in the money game. Guess who else it is? And and I believe I believe that this right here was a play on Ripple's part from a, from the very beginning. If they could if they could sell ownership a part ownership to Japan and have which this guy CEO of um, SBI Holdings controls eighty percent of the Japanese ban banks through the Japanese Bank Consortium. If they could sell ten and a half percent to a guy with this kind of power in another country, it would give them leverage so that the United States would do what needed to be done to be on the same team instead of trying to go at odds with all these other countries. But this guy here, the CEO of SBI, I mean, he's not making comments like this for no reason. XRP has potential to be global standard <laughs> in the future. So anyway, I hope that I've made my point for all you guys. Uh, all of this, all of these little um, hearings and this and that, this is all dog and pony shows. Uh, what's important is that everything that hopefully you bought Ripple for the same reason I bought, or you bought XRP for the same reason I bought XRP. You did your research and you, and you, you, you took a step back and looked at all of these digital assets and then you, and then it all roads lead back to XRP. And the reason they all read, lead back to XRP is, is there, there is no one reason. It's 50 reasons and they're all unbelievable. It's unbelievable that there's any money in any other digital assets when you really understand XRP. And if you don't re still really understand it, then you need to go to ripple.com and start reading, read every page in that website and then go, then go to the websites of all the others in the top 10 or 15 digital assets. And you'll come to the same conclusion. There's no question. It's not an if. It's just a matter of when you come to the conclusion. All right. I am the digital asset investor. I am not an investment advisor. Please, y'all, subscribe and hit the like button. And um, also, as I say in every video, you can get you can go to Ledger uh, Ledger's website to get your Ledger Nano S. Uh, the description uh, underneath every one of my videos will take you directly to Ledger's website. So that you can um, solve the uh, 
your own pers personal custody issue and you won't have to worry about whether some hacker is going to break into an exchange and steal your XRP. Um, it's the safest way to hold it. So go and get yours today. I hope everybody has a good weekend. I am going to be, um, I'm going to be out of pocket. I may do a video, uh, over the next, uh, you know, either Monday or Tuesday, but if I do, it's not, it's probably just going to be me talking with my cell phone. It's probably not going to be a detailed video like I usually do because I'm going to be out of town. Um, thank you all for listening and I will talk to you later.